get me out of bed so I can take my spot. The day in the life of these pit bulls. They're supposed to be big, bad killers. They don't like laying on ground. They prefer, prefer the soft confines of a bed. They like the sheets better when they're freshly clean. They don't like smelly sheets. And they do not like walking on wet ground. I said that already. They sleep everywhere where I decide to sleep. They even try to sleep in that wicker chair. This is just a bedroom. Close up on bikini. This is bikini close up. A minor entertainment for these dogs. All right, everybody, come on, get up, get up, get up, Jack, Dozer, come on, Dozer, get up. Don't look at me like that. Get up. It's time to get up. It's time to get up. Come on, get up. Dozer. All right, let's go take a leak. And then we go from there. How about it? What you think, Dodie? You don't care. You're always happy. Any attention is good attention. Come on, let's go. Come on, let's go. Come on. Dozer. Bring your butt on. Come on. Come on. You two, let's go. Now. Those are Jack. Let's go. Uh, we see who runs this household. Come on, let's go. them to have a taste for blood just so people know and they understand this dogs aren't able to eat vitamin C they can't properly digest it the way dogs create vitamin C is by digesting raw meat raw meat metabolizes in their body as vitamin C which helps their immune system so anybody that says giving raw meat gives a dog a taste for blood you're sadly mistaken you're sadly sadly mistaken raw meat is actually part of a dog's diet before they were dogs your house pet they were animals who hunted they didn't cook the food they didn't let it go through a processing plant they actually ate it that's how they survived for years thousands of years but I do give my dogs raw meat from time to time this is ground beef it's really real real cheap meat you know I'm not gonna give them the whole pack you know I'm about to make hamburgers or whatever but what I usually do I get chopped steak that butchers don't like to uh, sell anymore and that's what I give them because it's lean, hasn't been ground up. Ground beef is like the, the, 
the everything from a cow just grind it up into one. If I'm gonna give my dogs meat, like regularly, like I do daily, I give them chopped up steak. If I buy it by the packs, you can get it for about ten, fourteen bucks, about two and a half, three pounds, sometimes four pounds of ground beef. I mean, uh, chopped steak. There you go, boy. There you go. But I like my dogs to be healthy. As you see, I'm giving it with my whole hand, and I still have my fingers, so they're not trying to take it. Easy, boy. See? See? Easily, gently takes it off my fingers. Some of you are going to wish that the dogs bite my hands off. I don't care. See, my dogs, we, I'm a companion to them. I don't consider myself their owner. So, as companions, we don't intentionally try to hurt each other. We genuinely care about the other pack member because we need each other for survival. Let me finish making my patty. Now that we're on the subject of diet and nutrition, um, I want to say one thing. Never give your dog cooked food. The body's wasn't meant to uh, metabolize and break that down. If you're going to give them cooked anything, Chicken or pork. It's better if you boil the pork so you get some of that grease out. And chicken uh, is better to be grilled, not fried. Reason why are those two? Because E. coli salmonella. You know, you don't want that. Um, you don't want your dogs getting a t touch of that. But here's my advertisement spot for this uh, preview is Blue Buffalo. I think this is the greatest food ever made for dogs. I personally, right now, I use the basics um, uh, style, turkey and potato recipe. Um, her and him, they have allergies to corn, and they're kind of sensitive to other foods as well, so I'll be real careful about what I give them. But I've given all of them the Blue Buffalo brand, and it has no corn, no fillers. You, you can give them less per serving. And it uh, still gives them a nice full size. If you could tell that my dogs obviously don't look like they're missing any meals. Um, but yeah, I suggest Blue Buffalo. You know, I hear a lot about Timberlake and uh, and you know other kinds, and that's cool too. I just never tried it. I get what I want from Blue Buffalo, and I have no complaints. Well, on my days off, I usually like to plan an excursion with the dogs. You know, something that we all can do together. Go out, hang out somewhere. Never know what it's going to be. I like to take them down to Las Vegas Boulevard, but I only do it in twos. Can't control all four. And I don't want to put me or them or other people in any type of uncomfortable situation. So generally, I don't take them down to the strip. I only do them in twos. With bikini and Jack, and then I'll do Dodie and Dozer together. You know, only like that. Dog parks, I can do them individually. Can't do all three or four of them together. If I haven't said it before, Bikini, her right there, is the mother, and Jack right there is the father of these two. Individually, I can get them to ignore other aggressive dogs. As a pack, they will not back down from anything. And they're strong enough to pull my car individually. Together, there's nothing I can do to stop them if they decide to do something. So usually when I take all four of them together, I pick a dog friendly environment where I don't have to worry about other loose dogs running up to them or um, wild animals, anything that might trigger their prey drive or their protectiveness of each other. Because they like people, but they feel any one of them are in danger, them two are going to react. She is the nicest dog in the world, and he won't, he won't bear his teeth to save his life at a, at a human. But he will protect them with all his might. I've seen it. I'm aware of it, and I'm being responsible. So, 
this little excursion I might not be able to take any video of this just because I have to have full control I have to be fully alert and paying attention to all my surroundings as a responsible owner I feel that's important when you when you own pit bulls when you own one especially when you own four you have to be aware of what they're looking at and what's possibly coming their way and that's four different points of view right here I gotta always be aware of what's going on so if you don't get a chance to see what we did I'll tell you about it later that's a quick flick of us in the car Jack rides co-pilot he's always co-pilot he likes to see where we're going those are wants to be up here but he knows where he has to be Dodie's back there somewhere McKinney, she won't sit up to save her life. She's been like that ever since a puppy. She, she hates car rides. She hates to, she loves the destination, but she hates getting there. So, let's go. Come on, let's go. Dozer, let's go. Come on, let's go. This way. This way. Dozer, Dodie. Jack. Go ahead. Go. Come on. Let's go. Go, Dodie. <laughs> I'm back to paying attention to what they do. 